Ready to talk about the brand new release of Avoto 6.0? Let's get into it. What's up everyone, my name is Sal Sincata and today I'm gonna to show you some of the new features that were just launched last week by Evoto AI. Look, maybe you're using Evoto, maybe you're not. And if you're not, now is the time to jump on this bandwagon. And I'm telling you, this tool is more powerful than anything else on the market. There used to be a point in time where Evoto was just strictly focused on AI skin retouching. And that probably is one of the most difficult things to master, and they have done that. There is no tool better in the marketplace for retouching photos, right? The only other option is to be in Photoshop and spending 20, 30 minutes. Well, that's done. What's new, okay? So what was lacking in the tool set was the ability to select, call, create catalogs. So it was this kind of clumsy back and forth where you had to work with Lightroom to do all your selection, then export the images to a photo, then do the retouching, then re-import them back into Lightroom and maybe do some rendering out that way. Just super clumsy. We'll know more. This is the Lightroom killer. That's it. This tool will end your use of Lightroom. You have now complete editing control, Lightroom, catalog support, wireless tethering, of course, wire tethering so you can do what you normally do. But let's cover a few features. Sorry, I'm so excited. I know I'm all over the place with this. So they've got a series of new features and I'm gonna cover four of them today. So the four features I wanna cover for you that matter to me, that get me excited. Number one, culling. That's a huge one for me. Now I can do all of this in one tool. Not only selection tools, but AI culling. So now baked into the tool, the ability to do AI culling so that you just set a couple of parameters. I'm gonna show you this and off to the race as we go. Now look, I've tried a lot of AI culling tools and none are perfect. This is no different, but here's what I know. This is a company that has just reinvested based on customer requirements over and over and over on the beauty retouching. Like changes happen so quickly, faster than any other company I've seen. So I have high hopes that their version of culling is probably gonna dominate the marketplace. Number two, AI transform. This is gonna blow you away. You probably don't know just by hearing that word what it really means, but think about this. Whenever you shoot anything with like architecture in the background, or it's off center, maybe you've got the horizon line there, but buildings, right? If you're shooting a building with a wide angle lens and you're at a low angle, the building and anything vertical starts to kind of look like that, right? It peels away, it gets skewed. Now it's got AI transform built in. One click, it's gonna blow you away. Of course, we've got just standard editing tools in there, so now I can do editing. And then one of my absolute favorite features, do not tune out to this, you gotta stay to the end is uh, color matching. Now, color matching was in a previous version, and what this allows you to do is take a screenshot of maybe your favorite Hollywood film and match your image to that screenshot. So this is huge from a color grading perspective to give you completely unique looks. So I'm gonna show you that because they've enhanced this and made it even like more micro controllable, if that's even a word but you'll see what I mean. So let's let's get right into this. Let's jump right into the editing suite and the culling. So here's a recent job I shot for a high school senior. So this is a real senior. Um, you can see here, we took about uh, 500 plus images from this. Look, this can be laborious to go through this and select. I wanna get 95% of the way there. Can they get me 95% of the way there? So now you would go into the culling tab. You just select that and you hit this little gear icon. Now, again, I would suspect, I don't have inside knowledge, that this will become more and more refined as time goes on. So you can tell it what you want your image count to be. You can have closed eye detection, right? Seems pretty straightforward. We can look for uh, all sorts of other features, but what I really like about this is adjusting the sensitivity to that, right? Do I want it to look for underexposed images? Well, if I'm shooting low light, then probably not. I would turn this off, right? Do I want to look for overexposure? Well, if I'm shooting high key, then probably not, or have it on, but then just low sensitivity. Blur selection, duplicate selection. So duplicate for me, yeah. The way I shoot, uh, I tend to, right, double tap, right? So I wanna catch blinks or just get in between expressions. So when I'm working, right, I go vertical, horizontal, and I'm like pop, 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 zooming in and out. So yeah, I wanna look for those duplicates. And then I may wanna limit selections to how many per group. You can put zero here, you can say limit this. Now, 
This is really powerful. Is it gonna nail it 100%? Probably not. I've yet to see a tool do that, but can it get me close so that I can go in and refine that? Keep existing tags. If you've already flagged something, you know, whatever your method is, or you can have it just, how do you want this to auto tag? Do I want it to make everything red that it's selected? Once I hit start culling, what's gonna happen here on the right is it's gonna give me AI groups. So for me, this selected 123 images and I used five stars. I uh, didn't find any blurry pictures because I try not to take blurry pictures. No overexposure, uh, too underexposed, so we can actually click on this, okay, and see these images that it saw. Okay, this makes sense that it saw these. So I had to go back in and five star these. Of course this looks underexposed because I was shooting for this dark dramatic shot, but it makes it really easy for me to see what it's excluding or not. Uh, I can then come in here, see what duplicates it's pulled out, and then of course, you know, what are the AI selections? So what this allows me to do, and I will tell you, again, is a real client job, and this hit the mark 95% right out of the gate. You just gotta play with this, and right now it's free. But now that I've got my selection, right, because now I'm using one tool, okay, and you could manually call, you don't have to use uh, the AI. So I thought this was pretty slick. If you don't like the results, I can just come in here, change the parameters, and start calling again. And what I thought was really interesting is it doesn't necessarily take the same amount of time to rerun it as it did the first time. So that's pretty powerful, I thought. So it's kind of storing all that data and it knows like, hey, maybe you're gonna go from, uh, you know, if we take a look at this, uh, maybe I'm gonna go from standard sensitivity to high, right? Something like that. And then it's already got everything there for you. I will say the one thing it struggled with, and I've already reported this back, I think this is gonna improve over time, is, the way I work with my couples, seniors, portraits, something I like to do is have them serious at camera, smile at camera. And what I found is that the tool was struggling with selecting smile versus serious. And what I think will happen over time is they'll add a sensitivity knob for expression. That would make more sense, right? Because maybe I want serious looks, but no smiling. You know what I mean? You know, the other thing with eyes closed, it's gonna falter if you're posing somebody with their eyes closed, right? So maybe you you turn that feature off and you say low sensitivity, all those kinds of things. So this is V1 of this for them, but again, their history and track record with versioning and releasing new updates quickly, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time this video hits, there's already been a new release on these features for the product. So let's keep going, it's it's just amazing. So from there, of course, now I just, same kind of shortcut keys too, right? I don't know if you're familiar with Lightroom, but I would just hit D. So now I'm in editing mode and I have my traditional Lightroom panel, okay? So all the editing tools I, I want, okay? This thing keeps getting better, so hang in there, stay tuned. I wanna show you now the transform feature. So what I would do is go back to library, and now you can see on the left-hand side, I've got all my folders now. Right, so I can look job by job here uh, in the same way. So let me find the folder I'm looking for here. I wanna show you, I shot this building. All right, so here was a recent shoot I did. This is typical of architecture, right? So I've got a wide angle lens here. I'm shooting up uh, at my subject and you can see that kind of the building is falling away from us there. The pillars are a little bit skewed. Really, it would be correct to adjust both the vertical uh, and horizontal, right? So if we had a horizon line there, well, a lot of different tools, a lot of different ways to do it. None of them work relatively well or easy. And here on the right-hand side now, we have transform correction and they have AI transform, one click, bam, squares that image right up. So not only can you do this image by image, but you can now of course sync it across all of those images. Not only that, we have the ability to come back in and adjust it ourselves. So we have it selected for AI, but we can come in and then just say do level or just do vertical, right? But obviously we want both because we don't want it to be, you see what I'm saying here? So now you have the ability to do both here. And then of course you could turn that off and then just do it, you know, manually, uh, which is, you know, what you've had to do in other, other tools. So I'd much rather, you know, just let the tool do that. I mean, it's just like, how much time can you save me? So, so many people are out there and they complain about like the cost per image or things like that in their billing model. Man, I gotta tell you, who cares? Because we, I would spend so much time editing skin, toning images, uh, multiple tools, by the way, uh, and then, you know, transforming. If I can just do one or two clicks, sync everything and have culling done all in one spot, 
What's that time worth to you? So I just wanna show you one more image, right? Cause this is probably also pretty representative even if you don't shoot with architecture in the background. I mean, who shoots perfectly level? I, I don't know, not many people. So we're always gonna have a little bit of that cockeyedness to our shots. And I personally, I don't go through and straighten every image because I think to myself, unless they're gonna order the print, it's not worth the time in Lightroom to sit there right? Adjust the level, horizon line, one image at a time, because you can't even do it in batch because each one is a little bit off. So watch this now. It's just so ridiculous. So using the same tools, I just hit this and boom, it just squares that image up. How ridiculously powerful is this? I, I hope you're getting excited about this. All right, I want to show you one more feature. This right now is my favorite feature. It's been my favorite feature since they released it earlier. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because after we color correct, after we beauty edit, I'm a huge believer in grading your final images, right? Just like you go see a Hollywood film and it have a, an aesthetic, a tone over the overall image. They introduced this color matching in a previous version and I thought it was a great tool, very powerful, but it had its limitations. It was kind of a all or nothing, a very blunt force trauma way of applying the, the editing to the image. Well, now the tools in the control set uh, have gotten a lot more granular. So check this out. If we go back in the library mode and we just look at an image like this, right? So here's an image I shot uh, a Violet. I shot it for my YouTube channel. We were reviewing uh, the Westcott FJ200. We were doing some night shooting. Beautiful image, right? Uh, Tony, it's got, you know, it's probably pretty close, right? Maybe I added some vibr vibrancy, stuff like that, but that's a normal tonal edit uh, image. So how do we make this have that more cinematic look? Well, enter AI color adjustments, okay? So what you do over here is you now have the ability to upload, you can upload a reference. What I like to do for a reference, and you're seeing these screenshots here on the right, is I just go out to Google and I type in cinematic uh, looks, cinematic LUTs, cinematic color profiles, and you're gonna start seeing all sorts of things like this come back. And what it allows you to do is just take a screenshot of that. You take a screenshot of that, save it on your desktop, and then you upload that reference into the system. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Then what'll happen is they show up here. So this is something that you can build your library, your catalog over time. And then you have all these, so when you come in, it's one click. So previously, I'd be able to click that. Now this is new uh, as well. So now they're giving you color match with the reference image right next to it. That's insane. Okay, again, previously, all I really was able to do is like kind of control the amount here uh, that you would see, right? So we can go from nothing to 100, you know, and that's, it's great. You know, we can adjust some tone or color. Again, for what it was, there was nothing else out there like this. So this was pretty powerful. Now, here's where they've gotten even more powerful. I have two options here. I can go to, right, masking adjustments, and now I can mask either the person or uh, features of the person. So I can select their skin, eyes, clothes, whatever I wanna mask. Uh, of course, I'm gonna mask the entire person or I can mask the background. Now from here, I can dial down the toning and the color and see this in real time just on that person. Now that is pretty powerful before and after, okay? So we can get hyper granular with this and it gets even better. So what I can do here is we chose quick mode. I also have control mode. And what this does now, I feel like this is almost too much control on, on this. It's too much, you can start getting lost in the dials. I'm glad they did it. There's some people who are gonna, you know, kind of want to reverse engineer what does Evoto think the, this uh, setup looks like. And what you're gonna see are all the dials, saturation, hue, that it put together to color grade this image to look that way. And you can adjust it at a more granular level. That's just too much for me, right? For what I'm looking to do, that's just too much. So I'd rather operate in quick mode and then come in and I love this kind of masking. And then, like I said, I can just dial this down so that the skin, I still want the skin to look good, right? It's definitely got, look, the before is beautiful. I love the before. But every once in a while, I like having a toned image uh, that that just gives it a little bit more umph, if you will. And then we can come in here and just, you know, if I want to maybe warm that up a little bit, all sorts of things to get me to a different look based on whatever you want that look to be. And if I want to see that reference image again, I just pull that back up. How powerful are these new features? So give them a try.
right? If you're, if you're already using the tool, you're gonna love all the new feature set. If you're new to the tool, download the trial. I'll put the link here for, uh, for you, right? Mess around with it and you're gonna see there is nothing as powerful on the market. We use it in our business. I'm excited for the future with these guys. I think you will be too. If you wanna learn more about Avoto, I'm gonna be doing a lot more uh, reviews, so be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, where we focus on each of the feature sets a little more in depth. I'll see you in the next video.